All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week, I'm up in Maynard, Massachusetts, playing the Nine Hole Maynard Golf Course. They celebrated 100 years of golf here at Maynard in 2021, and I'm glad I found this neat little gem. Maynard was designed in 1921 by Wayne Stiles. Stiles is known for his partnership with John Van Cleek, and this course predates that. Stiles' design characteristics are most notable around the green, where he has deep bunkers and mounding, and he designed his holes basically from the green back. So here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stuart and Jacoby. As I have for the last few rounds, I'm using an all-authentic set of two woods, five irons, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter. And here's my ball, Callaway Super Soft. Here's the scorecard for Maynard. Not a long course, 28.53 from the white tees. Number one's a par four, 375 yards with a dogleg right. Here's my playing partner for this round, Chris Berry. Chris is a relatively new Hickory golfer and actually bought four irons from me prior to this round that he's using during this round for the first time. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go. A lot of room here off the front first tee, which is nice, especially for the hook that has a tendency to sneak out of my single plane swing. Notice some new graphics here. I'm trying to give a little bit more information on the clubs I'm using. If you have any tips on how you might want to see that differently, drop a comment below. Figure I'll just kind of show you the clubs I'm using the first time I use them in a round or on a notable shot. Um, as I'm using the single plane swing, I'm pretty much sticking with the same clubs these days, so uh, they won't change too much. There's a nice putt from Chris using his new George Nickel Precision putter. I'll show you those in a second. Here's number two, par five, 485 yards. Here's my McGregor Master Brassy. This is the club that I want to be using off the tee as long as it behaves. That's my miss with it. Fortunately, this fairway's wide enough to hold onto that hook. Chris is still trying to find a reliable club off the tee, but uh, he was hitting his Brassy all right here. So here's the four club short set that I sold Chris before the round. There are three George Nickel Precision irons in there and an Our Very Best flanged mashie. Our Very Best was kind of a store brand. I'm not sure who the, the larger maker of those clubs was, uh, but they're pretty good players, uh, especially the flanged mashie. It's heavy and uh, just like the McGregor OA mashie that I was using in my previous set. Uh, the cool thing about the precision irons is that they're all flanged, so that includes the putter, which uh, is one of the three clubs that Chris has now, and uh, the other two are a niblick and a driving iron. So he just needs to source kind of a mashy or a mid-iron, uh, and he'll have a pretty good all-precision short set. But in the meantime, the R Very Best is, is going to be a pretty good club for him. Uh, and the cool thing is, uh, I should note that uh, when I sell people clubs, it's my preference to be able to play the first round with them just so that I can kind of give them some tips and help them get familiar with the clubs and their personalities um, and answer questions for them right on the spot. And most important, if a club doesn't work for them, uh, then I can take it back and try to find something that will. Uh, rather than just sending clubs to people through the mail, I mean, I'll do that, but I would prefer to be able to play around with them um, so that I can get to know them and, and get to know how they're going to use the clubs. All right, moving on to number three, par three. This is a difficult par three. Elevated green here. I'm using the Circa 1910 Spalding Spring Face. This is a pretty collectible club, but in my hands it's a player, and I actually put a different shaft in it. The original shaft was irreparable, so I felt like it was a good candidate to play. Not a bad shot there, but uh, anything that's not on the green on this hole is going to make for a long par three. There's the Hagen Iron Man. That's actually a really good chip, um, if I do say so myself. I've been getting a lot better and more consistent with the single plane chipping technique, and that showed right there. And as you've seen in previous course logs lately, the putting is doing really well too with the single plane. Here's Chris using his precision putter. Nice confidence builder there on the short one. All right, number four is a par four, 345 yards. Of 
We've got water on the right side and close to the T. Kind of intimidating shot there. And I flirted with it, but the draw kind of came out. Not a hook, but a draw. Chris had some trouble off the tee here, but set him up for a nice shot with his new driving iron. Nice. I was pretty happy with that. Here I'm using the Tom Morris mashy. Would have liked to have gotten that up in the air, but uh, Maynard's a great hickory golf course. Um, pretty much every fairway runs right into the green so you can uh, run your shots up. Nice. Everything I love about a, a playing hickory golf you can do here at Maynard. And that was a nice shot with the precision niblick from Chris. Yeah, and even on the misses, I'm pretty happy with the putting right now. All right, number five is a par four, 355 yards, dogleg left. First shot here is the, pretty much you want to tee off with an iron to put yourself in a good position for your second shot. And I'm using the Spalding Spring Face once again here, and I could watch that on replay all day long. I was really happy with that swing. Unfortunate thing is that I broke the shaft on that club during this round. I, I believe it was on the next hole. I uh, didn't realize it till I got back home, uh, but I've since sold that club because that was the second time now that I broke a shaft You're in right. it, yeah. and it uh, just doesn't seem to suit me uh, or my swing very well. I, I keep breaking shafts with it. So I'm hopeful that it'll work for Kirk Watson, who bought it from me uh, at the Columbus Golf Trade Show. Kirk's in uh, Ames, Iowa. I'm hoping to get out to play with him some point in the summer of 2022. We'll see what my travel schedule allows. Basically uh, avoiding talking about <laughs> this really rough hole here uh, after the tee shot. But I finally made my way to the green. Probably should have chipped that. Yeah, and I'm in, a, I'm in a hurry to get off this green now. I like the hole a lot, though, uh, despite how bad I played it. Here's number six, another par three. Actually, another tough par three. 165 yards, protected by bunkers, and uh, green's elevated once again. And I'm using the Spalding Spring Face once again. I believe that was a swing that I, I broke the shaft. Uh, it wasn't a conventional crack. It was more of a stress fracture, which I have not been able to repair. So that's too bad. It was a fun club to use, but I think it was probably going to break on me again had I put another shaft in it to fix it. That's kind of an experimental shot with the mashie, but it worked. And I need those kinds of shots uh, with the mashie uh, to build up my confidence again. Uh, that was my favorite club uh, in my previous swing, but now with the single plane, uh, kind of had to figure out how to work with it again. Putting just kind of fell apart on this hole here. Oh well. All right, number seven, par four, 342 yards, severe dog leg left after the tee shot. Would have liked to get that back in the fairway, but uh, there's plenty of room over there on the right side and put me in a good angle here going into the green. So it's a blind shot into the green, kind of up on a hill here. Probably would have been not a blind shot had I hit it, hit it into the fairway. But I was real happy with that shot. That was the Otto Hackbarth Tom Stewart 2 iron. A great contact. I actually hit it into that bunker. Get over. But I uh, was real nice happy shot. with the contact. And there's another great, great approach from Chris using his niblick. I think he's getting along with that pretty well. He's using the Hagen Iron Man there to get out of the sand. Not too bad. Here's another mid-range putt that I put pretty close. Even on his misses, Chris was happy with his putting with the precision. All right, moving on to number eight, par four, 338 yards. This is my first time playing this hole, so I didn't realize that this blind tee shot goes downhill after the horizon. So probably didn't need to use this much club. Ended up hooking this shot left and uh, unfortunately lost that ball down there. Meanwhile, Chris does Great exactly ball. what you need to do and drills this right down the middle. Yeah, excellent shot. Thank you. 
So he ended up down at the bottom of the fairway here. Leaves you with a short approach into the green. He came up just a little short there using his niblick. I ended up having to take a drop right next to him because I lost my ball. Uh, but that gave me a chance, another chance to use my new to the bag McGregor Popular B flanged mashy niblick. That club suits my new single plane swing pretty well. You'll be seeing more of that in the future. And I obviously gave up on that hole there. <laughs> all right, number nine, par four, 298 yards. Seems like a short hole, but it's all uphill after the tee shot. Ended up hitting the ground before the ball there, but it still went out straight with some distance. Here you see the elevated nature of the hole after the tee shot. Let's talk a little bit about Styles' design characteristics. Um, you know, like Donald Ross, he liked to use natural topography in his designs rather than trying to overcome topography. So uh, a key thing that he would do was find a natural place for his green and then work the hole back from that. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, he liked to use deep bunkers and mounding around the greens. So all around, he used a very natural approach to design. After this course, maybe a couple years later, uh, he went on to partner with John Van Cleek, and they designed a lot of golf courses up here in New England, many of which are nine-holers. There's the putt of the round. Oh, just backed up almost to get in the hole. Great putt from Chris there to close his round out. But I'm hoping to get up to Hooper Golf Course in New Hampshire. That's uh, one of Styles Van Cleek's most popular nine-hole layouts. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get up there in 2022. Well, that'll do it here from Maynard, though. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this round. I'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here are two from my archive for you to check out. And a quick note, I'm aware of one person, at least one person, who's been watching these videos and is not a subscriber. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. <laughs> so please, if you like the videos and you're enjoying the channel, please subscribe. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. Thanks again. I'll see you next week.